OK, so we're going to have a look at evaluating this limit. And there's a really nice argument we're going to use later on. We'll get started. The first few things we're going to do are just some tidying up with algebra. And the very first thing I'd like to do is we try and take this n squared inside our product here. So what I'll do, just to make this a little bit easier, is instead of having each individual term to the power of 1 over n in the product, why don't we take the whole product to the power of 1 over n? That gives us a nice bracket. We can take our n squared inside the bracket now. And basically this is going to give us still the limit as n goes to infinity. And when we take the n squared inside the bracket, because the bracket is all being raised to the power of 1 over n, this has to turn into an n to the power of 2n, you check with your laws of indices. So we get still the same product now, but multiplied by n to the power of 2n. You've got your 1 over k squared plus 1 over n squared, all raised to the power of 1 over n. And what we'll do now is we'll try and take the n to the 2n inside this bracket. But here we've got actually n different terms. So you've got to realise that n to the power of 2n is actually n squared to the power of n. And we've got n lots of n squared. So each of these n squareds goes with one of the terms in the product. So that basically means we're going to be allowed now to take one n squared into each term in the product. So we've got now the limit as n goes to infinity just of the product from k equals 1 to n of is now n squared into 1 over k squared plus 1 over n squared. And then still this is all raised to the power of 1 over n. Now we can take the n squared inside the bracket here. This will give us something slightly nicer. And then we'll start to apply a few tricks to actually get us closer to evaluating the limit. So now we've got the product, still from k equals 1 to n, of n squared over k squared, and then just plus 1, your n squared and 1 over n squared cancel. And still all of this is raised to the power of 1 over n. OK, so a really useful technique you might want to use if you're evaluating a product, or especially an infinite product, is potentially taking logarithms of everything and then raising e to that power. So if you do e to the power of natural log of everything inside this limit, it will just be the same thing. And just some notation I'm going to use, rather than writing e to the power of everything, I'm going to just use the exponential function notation. So here, just e to the x, I'm writing as exp of x. So this is just going to save having everything in a superscript. So it's a little bit nicer. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity now of all of this stuff. I'm just going to write as e to the power of ln of itself. So exp, so e to the power of ln of all of this product to the power of 1 over n. Then this is going to be particularly useful. The reason that I'm writing this as e to the power of ln of everything is so that when you have natural log of some sort of product, you can write this as the sum of all the different logarithms separately. So this turns our infinite product structure into an e to the power of some sort of infinite sum, which would be slightly nicer to deal with. The very first thing we'll do is we'll just take out this power of 1 over n. You can see oh, there's a lot of brackets there, but this is inside the log. So we can take this power of 1 over n outside the log, and then we will split up the product next. So all we end up with this is our next step in the working, is e to the power of 1 over n, then it's ln of, and you've got the product from k equals 1 to n of, again, it's n squared over k squared plus 1. And now there's slightly fewer brackets there to deal with. And next thing we're going to do is we've got log of a product, so we can write this as the sum of all the logs of each of the individual pieces. So this gives it us a slightly nicer format that we'll find this is going to be more useful to work with. So we've still got e to the power of 1 over n, but now it's a sort of log of all these products. It's the sum of the log of all of these terms. So now it's the sum from k equals 1 to n of natural log of n squared over k squared plus 1. So we're seeing some nice structure here. We've got this sum. We've also got this multiplying by 1 over n. So we should be able to use this structure to our advantage in a sec. Now, before we deal with this sum, next thing we're going to do is actually take this limit inside of the exponential function. Essentially, we're allowed to do this because the exponential function is continuous. So if you imagine you've got some sort of sequence, we'll call it a n, then the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the power of a n. Assuming both of these limits exist, you're allowed to interchange the order of taking the function and the limit. 
So what we'll do here is we'll show that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n multiplied by this sum, we'll show that this limit exists. And when this limit does exist, because your function e to the x is a continuous function, this will be the same as the limit of e to the power of each of these terms. So this allows us, assuming that we're going to be able to show that this limit converges, we can write this all as just, it's going to be e to the power of now the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n multiplied by our sum. Which is nice because now we just need to evaluate the limit and then eventually we'll do e to the power of what we get. So, and what I'm going to do here, instead of writing n squared over k squared, I'm going to write this in a slightly strange form just to sort of show the kind of structure that we're going to use next. So instead of writing it as n squared over k squared, I'm going to write it as 1 over k over n all squared, which is the same. But this is quite helpful now, just to sort of illustrate what's going on. Because now I'm going to be interested in the function y equals ln 1 over x squared plus 1. So you can see here, this is basically this function evaluated at 1 over n, at 2 over n, at 3 over n, and so on, all the way up to n over n, so going up to 1. And then we add them together and multiply by 1 over n. So if you haven't spotted what the structure is here, I'll just draw a little diagram. So if we've got a graph of our function y equals ln 1 over x squared plus 1, between 0 and 1, and then we've split this up into n different pieces. Here are 1 over n, this is basically the width of one of these rectangles, and then ln of 1 over k over n squared plus 1, this is just the height of each of these rectangles, of the kth one. So here, the structure is, actually, it's just a Riemann sum in disguise, isn't it? So here you've got your k over n, the width is n, the height is ln 1 over k over n squared plus 1. And then when we take the limit as n goes to infinity here, this is just the limit as each of these strips get thinner and thinner, we get a more and more accurate approximation to the integral of this function between 0 and 1. So this is really nice, because now we can write, if I just label this star, we can say that our original limit now, it started off as a product, and then we've turned it into e to the power of a sum, but now it's actually e to the power of an integral. So here the limit as n goes to infinity of this sum is just the integral between 0 and 1, assuming that we can show this exists of ln 1 over x squared plus 1 with respect to x. What we'll do is we'll actually have to evaluate this integral now, and then we shall be done. Now, how are we going to evaluate this integral? Well, unfortunately, the first thing we need to do is the integrand isn't well defined when x is 0, so we need to rewrite this using limits to avoid any sort of problems there. So write this as the limit as t goes to 0 of just the same integral now between t and 1 rather than between 0 and 1. Then thinking about integrating ln 1 over x squared plus 1, don't know how to integrate this, but looking at it, it is something that I could quite easily differentiate. So we'll try using a trick here of integration by parts, where I set my u equals to ln 1 over x squared plus 1. I set my v dash term just equal to this is being multiplied by 1. So when I integrate my 1, I get x. And then when I differentiate my u, when I differentiate all of this using the chain rule, I end up with minus 2 over x cubed divided by 1 over x squared plus 1. And we can use the integration by parts formula. This will give us still all of this inside a limit as go, t goes to 0. Of Now we end up with u times v, so x ln 1 over x squared plus 1, evaluated between 1 and t. So that part will be straightforward enough. And we subtract the integral between t and 1, by u dash times v. So now you've got x and the minus 2 over x cubed over 1 over x squared plus 1 integrated with respect to x. So here we can at least tidy this up a bit, multiply this x by the one of the 1 over x terms here. So this disappears and we'll turn our x cubed here into an x squared. And you can see here you can multiply the top and bottom by x squared and you'll get something slightly nicer to work with. So in our next step, let's deal with each of the terms all at once. So when we substitute in x equals 1, you get 1 ln 2. So you just end up with ln of 2. 
So this is nice, this term is dealt with. Then we subtract t ln 1 over t squared plus 1. So we don't know what to do with this just yet. We'll deal with that in a moment. And now here as well, we've got the minus and minus. So let's just get those to cancel out and turn into a plus. So you get plus the integral between t and 1. Now if you multiply the top and bottom by x squared, what do you get? You just get 2 over 1 plus x squared. Which is actually really nice because this is just an arctan integral. So here you're just going to end up with 2 arctan 1 minus 2 arctan t. So let's include this. And we leave our ln2 alone, that term's dealt with. This one I'm going to write in a slightly different formula. I'm going to try applying L'Hopital's rule here. So we end up with minus ln 1 over t squared plus 1. And I'll write this instead of multiplied by t, divided by 1 over t. Because then I can differentiate both of these terms. Hopefully then I can evaluate the limit because there won't be a logarithm involved. And we've also got plus 2 arctan 1. And also minus 2 arctan t. Okay, so here, you know that arctan of 1, this is pi over 2, so 2 arctan of 1, this is just going to be equal to pi over 2. And here, the limit as t goes to infinity of 2 arctan t, arctan of 0 is just 0, so this is going to converge to 0, so we can remove this term as well. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere with this. We've got ln of 2, I'll just take this outside of the limit, and then we've also got this pi over 2, which we can take outside, so plus pi over 2 but then we've still got this other term to deal with. So I'll say, I'll write this as minus the limit as t goes to infinity, sorry, t goes to zero, of ln 1 over t, but we're applying L'Hopital's rule, so let's differentiate this and we'll differentiate this as well. And fortunately, we've already done some of the work here, haven't we? We know how to differentiate ln 1 over t squared plus 1. We've done the same just with x as the variable. So in our numerator now, we're going to end up with minus 2 over t cubed, over 1 over t squared plus 1. So this is all our numerator applying L'Hopital to this expression. Then you've got the 1 over t, this differentiates to give minus 1 over t squared. And then you're taking the limit as t goes to infinity of all of this big horrible fraction. So what I'll do now is I'll clear the board and then we can pick up from where we left off there. So now we're almost done, we just need to evaluate this limit here. The first thing we can do is spot we've got the two negatives which cancel out, so that's nice. Then here, because we're dividing by a fraction, this is basically the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of this fraction. So you're basically just multiplying everything by t squared. So if we get rid of this now, we've just got the limits, t goes to infinity of all of this, multiplied by t squared. So if I write this out now, we can multiply by t squared in the numerator. So we keep our ln2 plus pi over 2. We've got now the limit as t goes to 0 of, it's going to be 2 over t over 1 over t squared plus 1, when we multiply by t squared. And this is nice because now we can multiply the top and bottom by t squared. We should get something we can deal with. So again, ln2 plus pi over 2 plus the limit as t goes to 0 of, it'll be 2t over 1 plus t squared. Now the limit as t goes to 0 of this is just going to end up with 0 over 1 plus 0, so this is just equal to 0. So after all that work, this term just gives us 0. So our integral then is equal to ln2 plus pi over 2. But we're not quite finished. Don't forget that the original limit that we were actually trying to calculate wasn't equal to this integral. It's equal to e to the power of this integral. So just to conclude now, the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared multiplied by your product, so k equals 1 to n, 1 over k squared plus 1 over n squared, all to the power of 1 over n. This is now equal to e to the power of ln2 plus pi over 2, which gives us e to the power of ln2. This just cancels out and gives us a factor of 2. And then e to the pi over 2 stays as it was. So that's your final answer then for the limit.